Hi Silke, it's Ian Wilson here from Q-Tips. I'm just responding to that email you sent me and just to, to create a quick video to show you how to do your vo volume calculations for that excavation that you were looking at. So if I have understood your problem correctly, this video should help. And what I've done is I've got the, the sites or the, the points, the corners of the building and then created some contours for the edge of the excavation pits, created a couple surfaces I then uh, calculated the difference in volume between the two surfaces to come up with a final volume. And we get, there's two ways to calculate it. And the first uh, is using something called the raster calculator. And we get a total volume of 217.58 meters cubed. And then the other one is using a simple volume algorithm. And it also comes up with a very similar figure of 216. So I'm going to show you both of those um, options. And hopefully you'll find one of them useful. So let's get on with that now. Okay, so I'm going to start off by setting up a folder, a project folder. And I'm going to call it volume. And in that little project folder, I will create two more folders for the project and then also one for the data. And then I'm going to copy the data from your email into that folder called data. So that's on my desktop. It's volume data. Okay. Right. So now I should have two new files in that folder. There we go. All right. So this is the PDF you sent me of the study area. And there we go. So in your, e in, in your email to me, you say that you want to calculate the volume of these excavation pits from the corner of your building. So we got the corner of the building, and then you've offset by one meter for the full depth of the excavation. And then further from that, uh, which is 3.6 from the, the corner of the building, that's where the surface is. So it's going to be surface dug down to the full depth of three meters, or 797, which I think you said in the email. So if I've understood your query correctly, I, I think what we need to do is create some surface models and then calculate the difference in volume between the two. And I'm going to show you how to do that now in QGIS. Okay, great. So just having a look at the CSV that you sent me for the corner of the buildings. So I'm going to use these in my query and I'm just going to edit it slightly so that it makes more sense to me. So you've got Chabada Ekin here, which is the, uh, I guess it's the, the corners of the building. So I'm going to just call this point, point. And then you've got the X value with the uh, Reichswert and Hochwert, which, as I understand it, is the coordinate reference system that you've used. And that's the one that I'm going to use. And I do, I have found a coordinate reference system in QGIS that does uh, describe that uh, coordinate reference system or, or that transformation. So let's see how we do that now. So let's just save this and add that new CSV to QGIS. Right. So I'm going to use my data source manager, select the delimited text option navigate to that tutorial, uh, to that CSV. There it is there. Okay, and I've added this once before just to check if it worked. So, th and that is the coordinate reference system that I'm going to choose. And then everything else is adding correctly and I can see the three columns, which is how I expect to see it. And I needed to set the custom delimiters to semicolon, but everything else looks good. So let's add that. And the transformation type, I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna choose that first one. If it's different, you'll know which one to choose. And close. There we go. So there we've got four points added. It's got the corners of our building. So let's just change this color ever so slightly so I can, and size so that I can see it. And then what I can do is just, just confirm that I'm in the right area. So what I'll do is add the open street map, the open street map standard view or, or standard tile, and then compare it to your PDF that you sent me. So I need to go back there to that folder. I probably shouldn't have closed it, but let's just open up that PDF and have a look and see what that looks like. 
okay so if we look at that in flow compared to what I've got on my screen that's the right place okay so assuming that's the right place I need to crack on and show you how to calculate that excavation volume right so what we need to do is create the buffers which you suggested you have already done but I'll start from scratch and create these buffers so we're going to use the vector geoprocessing tools buffer tool and we're going to set the distance of 1 as the offset distance we can dissolve the result and we'll create a temporary file for now run that there we go and then do the same thing but with 3.6 as the distance okay let's add that drag that below okay so now we've got the buffer the buffer distance of of one meter and 3.6 so the distance as I understand it 3.6 is the, the 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 surface edge and then the depth of one meter is uh, the, the the full depth below the actual corner of the building so that is uh, 800 meters minus 797 so that's the depth of three meters so what we need to do is we need to turn these buffers which are currently polygons into lines then assign the elevation values to those records or those different features and then create a surface model and calculate the elevation or the volume difference between two between two surface models or two or two rasters so what we need to do is firstly join these buffer layers and then turn them into lines so I'm just going to rename this one so we can see a difference between the two and then we'll use a tool under geoprocessing tools called union and we're going to go buffered one to buffered the overlaid field we're not worried about overlaid fields and we can create a temporary layer once again and close there we go and we'll turn those off this should now be a, a combined a combined layer right so now we need to convert that into lines because we want to use the lines I'm going to create those turn those lines into contours and then convert the, the, the lines into a surface model so let's use the vector tool geometry and it is polygons to lines so we select that option union and we'll create a temporary file again and close and turn off that union there we go right now this currently is being treated all being treated as as one layer and then it's got a second layer there so what I'm going to do is just edit and delete this one and then stop editing and C and then I want to split this into separate features so currently all, all these are being treated as one feature so that's why there's only one record in the attribute table but I want to split it into um, single parts so I'm going to use the vector menu tool again under geometry and it is multi part to single part and we'll create a temporary line again and close now let's see what that looks like right so now we should have I'll just turn this one off we should have separate features for each of those lines so each each of those lines will be its own feature and have its own record in the attribute table so that's what we want to see everything else here that we've already used the buffers and the union and the original line we can remove from our project we don't need to see those anymore and while I'm thinking of the project let me save this project as something in our in our parent folder and we'll just call it excavation right okay so I am going to first of all let's just change this color slightly so that uh, you can see it online I know sometimes it's difficult to see depending on the resolution of your screens there we go okay so we the depth of the edge of the hole is going to be the same as the rest of the surface and if you indicate you have indicated to me that this has got a one in one slope so it's all flat and that the uh, the the depth I think you said is 800.6 meters but I'm just going to assume it's 800 for for argument's sake and then the bottom is uh, 797 so we'll 
create a um, new column, a new column in the attribute table for the elevation. So we'll start editing and we'll create new columns or a new column. It's called elevation. And it is going to be a decimal number. The length can be six. It doesn't really need precision, but we'll give it a precision of one. There we go. And now we just need to set the actual values. So that's 800. So we'll use the, the field calculator to calculate this value. And it's 800. Okay, yeah, happy with that. And then everything else is going to be 797. So field calculator again. 797, okay. Right, there we go. Um, there's a couple of columns here I don't need, uh, so I'll just remove them. So it's everything else. Just say okay, remove those. These don't have names, but it's, it's not really critical at this point. If you wanted to, you could go in and name those if you needed to. All right, right. So the other thing I want to do when I create this these surface models is have an, an extent. So I'm just going to create a final um, contour line, which is the extent of this this uh, this area. So let's I started editing again. I'm going to open a. Uh, I just want to access a toolbar down here, which allows me to add a shape. So it's shape digitizing, and the one I want is the rectangle. Whoops, let's just try that again. There we go. And the elevation of this one is 800 as well. Okay, so now we've got the flat area. So this contour is 800. The edge of the pits is 800. And the bottom of the pits is 797. Nine, uh, seven. Okay, so now we can stop editing. And you'll see that this is still a temporary file, but I'm quite happy that we are going to use this and it, I can commit it to, to be a permanent file. So I'm just going to right click on it and say make permanent. And then go into my folder that I created under data. And I'll create a new folder here. I'll just call it vector. Okay, so in that folder, we're going to have a new file called contours. Okay, all right, so now we can use that to create a surface model and we'll use that elevation value. Okay, okay, so you see that little chip that was uh, that little chip icon was indicating that it was a temporary file, it is now a permanent file. So let's rename this contours. I'll right click and open up the attribute table just to make sure that those elevation values are still there. Okay, that's great. So now we can create a surface model from that. Um, before we move on, I'm going to create a second surface model. So we are comparing, essentially what we're doing is we're comparing two surface models to each other. Uh, let me maybe sketch that out for you. Right, so I just want to sketch that out for you. So, um, sketch, sketch pad, what is it called? I'm just looking for a little tool. Okay, here we go. Sketch IO, this will work. Okay, so I'm going to sketch that out. So what we've got is we've got a, I want to compare the difference between a surface and then a depth. So I'm going to have, actually that's that's wrong. Let's, let's describe it like this. So it's, we've got our actual pits dug. And we're going to compare that to this surface. So we're going to have two layers. We're going to have one which is the surface and then the actual pits. And then what we'll do is by comparing them, we're going to calculate the difference between the two, which will give us a volume. So for, for, for that reason, we need a second raster, which is just going to be the extent or the greater area, which is flat, which is uh, 800 meters above sea level. So to do that, I'm just going to create a new layer. And it's going to be for just for this contour. And I'm going to export it, save selected features as. And this one, we'll just call it the 800, 800M contour. Okay, everything else is fine. 
Okay, so now we have two line layers which we can create our surfaces from. And the surfaces we are going to create are triangulated irregular networks. And you can access those via the processing menu. So if you haven't accessed it already or activated the plugin, you'd need to go to plugins, manage and install plugins. And then under the installed plugins, there is a plugin called processing. Now this is a core plugin, so it is packaged with QGIS. So you just need to turn it on. You don't need to install it, but you may already have yours turned on. So if it is turned on, you'll see a menu with processing and then a toolbox. And you'll also see an icon with the toolbox uh, icon. So we're going to open up that toolbox and we're going to search for TIN for Triangulated Irregular Network. And that'll give us access to TIN interpolation. So this is the one we want. So we're going to create surface models from these. Before I do that, I just want to deselect all the uh, selected layers and then maybe zoom to their full extent. And then let's run this TIN interpolation. So we'll start off with the greater area. So this is the 800 meter contour. The elevation um, field will add to the query. We need to set the full extent to be the same as the layer. And then we're going to choose a pixel size, or size of 0 0.1 meters. You can change this depending on what resolution you want. And we'll just use a temporary layer for now. So we actually, no, what we'll do is we'll create a permanent layer. Save to file. And under the data folder again, I'm going to create a new folder and just call it raster. And this raster is going to be the surface. So it's the 800, it's a big 800 meter flat surface. So 800 meters above sea level. So we can run that. That should run. There we go. So we've got a new raster. It's all black. And you can see in the uh, layers panel here, it's all 800 meters. Okay, so we need to do that again. Except this time we're going to do it for contours. Elevation again. Everything else is the same. Except we are going to call it... Uh, what are we going to call it? Excavation. Okay, so we've got excavation and surface. Let's run that. So now let's compare it. Okay, something happened there that it did not like. Okay, I'm going to run that again. Just remove this one and run it from scratch. So I want to choose contours, elevation, add the same extent and then we will just it's probably going to be a file there already so we'll just overwrite this excavation one and run and close there we go so that's what I expected to see um, so what we've got here is we've got 800 meters being white so there are all these flat areas and then the darker areas are deeper or sl or less a lower elevation so so basically the edge of our pits dip down and then this little gray gradient shows us that it goes into the pit and then out the other side. So now what we can do is compare the difference between these two raster surfaces. And we will do that using a tool called the raster calculator. So let's close this down. Okay, so now this raster calculator is going to be used. So let's just uh, change this again. And what we've got is we've got, we've essentially got each little cell, which is 0 0.1 by 0 0.1, okay, so it's the, the width and the depth, uh, or the width and the length are 0 0.1 by 0 0.1. This is the cell size that we chose when we created the rasters using tin interpolation. Now we're going to compare the difference between, <coughs> excuse me, two surfaces to get the depth. And then once we have the depth, we'll have the volum volume for each of these little cells. Okay. And the depth is the surface, which is going to be 800 as the uh, surface, to a maximum depth of 797. So now that's the maximum depth. But then obviously we've got the edges of the pits doing that. So this depth will change. So the difference between the surface and the uh, excavated depth or the um, the foundation will be that surface minus the excavation to give us this distance which will have a maximum of three meters. So it's gonna the equation is going to look like this and we're going to use the raster calculator 
to run this calculation. So it's surface minus, um, what should we call this? Uh, excavate and depth is fine. Let's just call it excavation. Okay. And then to calculate the volume, multiplied by 0 0.1, multiplied by 0 0.1, and that will give us the volume for just one cell. And then we'll need to add up all of those um, cells together to create a to get a final volume. Right. So let's let's do that. Okay. So it's the raster calculator, and there are only two rasters in our model. So they are or in our project. So they are represented here. But we are creating a new volume, a new volume surface model or a new volume raster. So let's just call it volume. There we go. And we're going to use the same projection, so that's all good. So what was it? We're going to open the brackets, or inside brackets, we're going to go surface minus excavation multiplied by 0 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.1 and OK. And there we go. So what we should have now is a whole lot of values for the volume for each individual cell. So everything that is outside of our pits will have a volume of zero. So let's just double check that with our little information tool. Zero, 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 zero. And then inside the pits, at the bottom of the pit, there should be a maximum value there, 0 0.03. And if we compare, if we have a look at the quick calculation using our little calculator app, that would be uh, a depth of 3 multiplied because it's a uh, uh, surface minus the, um, the the bottom of the foundation which was 800 minus 797 so that's 3 multiplied by 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 should get the volume the maximum volume or the maximum uh, yeah the maximum volume for each cell so that is 0 0.03 cube meters. Okay, so I'm happy that that is going that is showing what we expected to see. And then these values will be slightly less as you move up the sides of that foundation pit. Okay, there we go. So now all we need to do is we need to calculate the um, sum of the pits together. And we're going to use something called a zonal statistics to do that. But we do need an overlaying um, polygon. And I'm going to use the 800 meter contour line, convert that into a polygon, and use that as the overlay polygon. So I'm going to go vector, geometry tools, uh, what is it? Lines to polygons, 800 meters. Uh, I'm not going to create a temporary one. I'm going to create a permanent one, and I'm going to call it, well, let's just call it volume, volume query. So the shape file is going to be called volume query. Run that. And close. Let's see if that added. There it is there. Correct. Okay. That's what we want to see. Okay. Let's change this to be 50. Okay. So if we open up the attribute table for volume query, there shouldn't be much going on there. We just got the point and then the actual elevation. Okay. So now let's run that, pr that um, zonal statistics. So also you can find that under the geoprocessing or the processing toolbox just type in zonal zonal statistics and the raster we're going to run zonal stats for is the volume and we're going to overlay volume query and then what we've got in here is we've just got the um, the prefix for new columns that are going to be added to this uh, polygon and then this is what it's going to calculate for so we need to choose to calculate for sum sum is ultimately the total volume so all of those little cell volumes added together will give us the total volume to be excavated we can add some extra ones here uh, for an interest sake um all right there we go so we've we've selected six but the one we're interested in is sum so let's say okay and run and that's quite a quick query and all it's going to do is add six new columns to this polygon we open up that 
and V sum is our volume, which is 217.58 meters cubed. So that is the total area to be excavated, which is the difference between the excavation and the surface rasters. Now that is one way to do it, and I wanted to show you that way just to introduce you to the raster calculator, which is quite a powerful tool. But there is another quicker way, and I'll show you that too. You just type in volume to your uh, processing toolbox, and that pops up with a couple options. But we're going to choose the first one, which is raster volume. And we are going to run the raster volume for the excavation um, for the excavation raster. So let's select that. The input layer is uh, excavation. And what we're doing is setting the base level to 800 meters. And now we need to choose the method. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to add all the volumes below the base levels. The base level is 800. So everything that's under 800, as in uh, seven up to 797, will be added to all those uh, areas around it to give us a total area or some total stats. And let's run that. And what it does is it creates a, a HTML file. It stores it in a temporary folder on your system and gives you a little link to it down here. So if we click on that link, it pops up with the actual volume for that specific, for that specific uh, query. And it's 216. Now if we compare that to the raster calculator, they're not quite the same, but they are very close. So we've got 216.79 and 217.5 so there's there's a difference of point what is that point 0.8 cubes so nearly a meter cube difference between the two which might be significant or it might not but anyway i hope i hope uh, that that one of those two solutions will will basically work for you and that's how you do it so silka yeah i hope i hope that's been an interesting um, tutorial and a video that that can help you solve the problem that you you're looking to solve Give me a shout if you have any questions, um, and then I'd be interested to hear if it worked. Okay, good luck with it. Cheers.